music. Thank you, Patty. And now it's time for story time. And Lori Snaman is going to have our story for us today. So if we have kids, if they'll come and grab the little basket and they'll come around and pick up the little green flags, we would appreciate that. We need a cheer for you, right? Bud and his wife were sitting on the front porch. You see, in the country, they usually have porches and sometimes they have swings. And every evening they would sit out on their porch. They loved each other. They were newly married. They were saying all those sweet things like honey and sweetheart. They were listening to everything each other said. It was such a nice time. They would sit there at the end of the day and talk. And Bud started telling the same story he always told about his horse named Dude. Now, Dude was a special horse. You see, his dad had a horse farm. And on that horse farm was Dude. He was just one of the horses, but Bud loved his horse. Oh, he loved his horse. And when he would whistle, Dude would run across the pasture right up to Bud, and he would put his big, soft nose right on his chin, and they would nuzzle a little bit. It was so sweet. And then another thing that they used to do was something, they would go to the county fair, and they would do something called Bracken. Bracken is like a sideways dance, and they actually got the main prize because he was so good at it. Oh, he loved his horse. But you know, when your dad's selling horses, you just can't get all that attached. Well, Bud went off to Academy, which is a good thing. But who do you think he missed? Dude. Oh, he missed Dude. And he was coming home from home leave. And I'm sure he wanted to see his mom and his daddy. But he couldn't wait to see who? Dude. Dude. So when he got home, he did a special what? Whistle. And he whistled. And all the horses were out there in the pasture. And there was no response. And he whistled again. And there was no response. And he looked out there and he went up, he looked at all those horses out there. And he didn't see Dude. Well, he was upset. He went into the barn. He didn't see him there either. He ran in the house and he went to his father and he said, Dad, where's Dude? And his dad said, we have a horse farm. We sell horses, 
you were told that you shouldn't get that attached to the horses. I needed to sell that horse. I have a school bill for you to pay, and I had to get rid of your horse. Well, Bud was upset. Tears came to his eyes, and he said, Dad, where did you sell my horse? And he said, Bud, it's not your horse anymore. It's sold. You just need to get through it. So here he was all these years later telling his new wife that story again about how he lost his horse and how his heart had never been the same. And you know, she loved Bud. And you know, when you love somebody, you serve to people and you want to do stuff that is nice for them. Yeah, because you have Jesus in your heart. And she thought, the nicest thing that I could ever do is see if dude is alive. I mean, maybe he's out there at some horse farm. I know it's been a lot of years, but maybe, well, and maybe, just maybe, if he's dead, because horses don't live as long as people, maybe he's got a boy horse or a girl horse, and then he could at least have somebody to remember dude by. And so she looked all over. The next day, she talked, she asked. When the mailman came to their house, she asked him if he knew anything about dude, and you know what he said? Yeah, I knew about dude. He said, you know, the father sold it to me. Yeah. And he, she said, do you have him? Oh, he said, that was years ago. And he said, I got real cheap, and I turned around, and I sold him. And he said, I sold him to another horse farm. Well, let me check on that horse farm, see if he's still around. And he got back with her months later, and he found out, she found out that he'd been sold to another farm, and they didn't know where. But the mailman said, I'll just keep my ears open. You know, I talk to a lot of people. I'll see what I can do. And a whole year went by. And one day, Bud's wife got a phone call, the most exciting phone call. The mailman located Dude, and he was still alive. And he was on a horse farm. Now, this was Tennessee. He was on a horse farm in Georgia. And it wasn't that far, maybe an hour and a half. And he was still alive. And he even said, they're having trouble with Dude. They are irritated with him. I think you might be able to get him back. Well, she was excited. She couldn't wait till her husband came home. Oh, she was so excited. And he came home, and he was hot, and he was dusty, and he was hungry. And she said, oh, honey, let's go for a ride. And you know what he said? I don't want to go for a ride. I'm hungry, and I'm tired. She said, oh, honey, come on. Instead of sitting on the porch swing tonight, let's just go for a ride. He said, I don't want to go anywhere. And she said, well, I didn't make dinner. And we we're just going to have to go to a restaurant somewhere. So why don't you get in the car and we'll go. And he gave her that look. It wasn't a sweet look either. And she got him in the car. And she drove. And she was smiling. And she was driving. And she was humming. And you know what he was doing? His head was down. He was crabby. Oh, he was crabby. And she just kept driving and driving. And then you know what else he did? He started going... I want to go home. Can you imagine somebody who acts like that? I don't want to go home. I'm hungry. I want to go home. And she just kept driving past the restaurants all the way to Georgia. And pretty soon, do you know what else people do sometimes when they're mad? They stop talking. Can you believe that? People just like shut people out so that they can punish them. And he started, mm. and she talked to him and he wouldn't say anything. She pulled into Georgia, she pulled down some lanes, and she went way over to some horse farm. And there, way out in the field, was a whole lot of horses, and she pulled the car up to the fence. And he said, what are you doing? Well, I guess he did have a voice. And she said, well, I just thought I'd sit here for a moment. And then she said, why don't you get out of the car? And he said, I don't want to get out of the car. And she said, Bud, get out of the car. And he said, I don't want to get out of the car. And so she took the keys and she put them outside her door. And she said, well, I guess we're not going anywhere. Do you know what? Bud got out of the car. He didn't have legs that worked. And so he walked around the car. 
She took those keys, she locked the door, opened the window, and said, I'm not going anywhere until you do something for me. What do you want? She said, I want you to do that whistle. What whistle? She said, you know that one, I don't know, what was that whistle? What was that horse you had to do? Well, I guess he could talk. And he said, I don't want to whistle. And she said, well, I'm going to leave unless you whistle. So he didn't whistle, so she started to roll the car back. And so he whistled. But he didn't whistle very good. And all those horses were out there in the pasture, and they just kind of looked at them like they were kind of weird. And she said, you better do it a lot stronger or I'm leaving. And so she pulled that car backwards more. And this time, you know, when you get mad, sometimes you can be even louder. This time he was mad. And he whistled. And suddenly, out of the pasture, <laughs> she heard a horse. And the horse started rushing towards them. And she looked at her husband, and he wasn't there. He was over the fence, and so was she, standing next to the fence. And that horse came running towards him. And guess what? He came over, and he nuzzled his neck. Buds had tears in his eyes. And then the horse did this little sideways dance a few minutes later. And he knew that that was dude, his beloved horse, that he loved so much. Well, there was a little boy there from Georgia. Now, you all probably have better accents than I do, but I'm going to tell you what I think he said. He went over there and he said, what are you doing with that horse? And he said, well, I knew this horse. And he said, well, that's my dad's horse. And he said, yes. And he said, I, I actually had this horse at one time. And he said, do you think your dad has any interest in selling that horse? He said, well, you know, he's a stubborn horse. And we don't like that horse. And I go ask my dad. So he went all the way over to get his dad. And his dad came back. And they agreed to let Bud have the horse. And Bud got his phone out. And he called his in-laws in Tennessee. And he asked him to bring a trailer. And they loaded up dude in that trailer and they brought him home to Bud's house and that night Bud and dude slept side by side in the barn getting to know each other again after all those years and it reminds me boy and girls that Jesus loves us he never wants to be away from us if you grow up and think that it's okay to leave him he will always wish that you're with him. He knows, he knows your whistle. He knows how many hairs are on your head. And he never wants to be separate from you ever. So never leave God. Amen.